Welcome to The Faithful Steward. This is a podcast all about sharing biblical wisdom and practical insights in order to help church leaders pursue and teach financial freedom as part of Christian discipleship. We believe this is a spiritual conversation and this is a place where the church needs to lead the way in order to move our communities forward in how we steward God's resources. I'm your host, James Lenhoff, and I am so passionate about this conversation and helping leaders have the confidence to step into it. We believe that if we help people thrive financially and grow spiritually, it changes everything. And I am so excited to join you on this journey. This podcast is brought to you by GoodSense. If you'd like more information about what we're up to, you can go to our website at goodsensemovement.org. All right, let's get started with today's conversation. Today, I want to talk about this idea of financial success. You know, we are surrounded on all sides by pictures and images and social media posts that point to what it looks like to be financially successful. And we need to square that idea of financial success with scripture. We need to have a context for us to experience financial success without it becoming the goal. And that's a really hard thing to do a lot of times. We, in many ways, feel a lot of similar things that the world tells us. We should be prepared for our future. We should feel secure. We should be putting ourselves in positions where we are accumulating wealth and we are building something. And we do that. We, we certainly want to be on that path. And so a lot of this sense of financial success feels really worldly. And so how do we land in a place where we can resolve some of that tension of being in the world, but not of the world, of being actually different in the way that we approach the, the idea of financial success? And so first and foremost, let's just acknowledge the fact that if we're aiming for some of these things like building wealth over time, preparing for our future, saving and growing our net worth, we are going to feel like a lot of the rest of the world that is doing the same things. The question is, what's the motivation? What's the reason that we're doing it? See, the world is accumulating wealth because it finds its security in its wealth. It finds safety. It finds status and significance there. Uh, It finds a lot of self-indulgent pleasure. And so a lot of times the accumulation of wealth is the end. It's the whole point. It's the goal. We're building the biggest barns possible. We're accumulating the most money that we possibly can because that's the whole point of life. A lot of times in the world's eyes, that's the goal. And as a result we end up serving money. We see a lot of people in the world making decisions entirely out of service to money. Get more of it, accumulate more of it. Uh, Don't be generous because that way you get to keep more of it and feel even more secure and more significant. And those are the things that we need to fight against. We want to frame our idea of financial success in a lot of ways. uh, the, The change is not necessarily in the process. We're still saving, we're still accumulating, we're paying down debt, we're building our net worth. But the the main differentiation is in the why. Why are we doing this? Why are we accumulating resources? Why are we trying to accomplish financial success? See, the believer should be moving towards more and more financial resources solely for the purpose of being prepared for future obedience and to honor God with his resources. The world is accumulating more resources for their own self-indulgence. We want to be accumulating resources so that we can step even further into generosity and be obedient when God asks us to do something with his money. The world is seeing their wealth as their source of security and confidence. We find our security and our confidence in God, and money is just this neutral thing. We don't find our security there. We may be building resources up over time, but it's not because we're hoarding and protecting ourselves. And that is really hard to maintain, but that is really what we want to be aiming at, is this idea that money is neutral. It is not our source of provision or protection. God is. And then lastly, the world sees money from an ownership standpoint. I did it. I built it. I made it happen. This is mine. I deserve to do whatever I want with it. I get to keep it. I have authority over it. 
where a believer sees these resources from a stewardship standpoint. I did not create this. God gave me the time, the skill, the breath in my lungs, the abilities to build this over time, and it is always his, it always will be, and he gets to choose what happens with it because I don't own it. He does all of it. And so we can see a lot of similar progressions towards financial success, but the core motivation for why we're doing it has to be different in order for us to be protected from falling into the traps of worldly possession and this idea of becoming addicted to money. This is a challenge for the church. I think overall, we kind of fall on either one side or the other, that money is bad and we should be taking vows of poverty and we should not have money because money is evil. On the other side, you have this idea that if God loves me, I should be successful, that that's just part of the deal, that being a believer should be a life of ease and comfort. And I don't think that's true either. And so both of these extremes are pulling against each other and making us feel either guilty if we find our, our path to financial success, because we should be taking this vow of poverty, or we feel entitled because God loves me enough to give me all this extra so I get to do whatever I want with it. And we need to break through those ideas and see money as neutral. Money is not good or bad. It is a neutral thing, and we get the opportunity, if we hold it loosely, if we maintain open-handedness, we get the opportunity to honor God with it. Financial success is not evil. It's also not the birthright of every believer. There are many, many believers in this world that do not have wealth for many different reasons, different circumstances, different situations that they're growing up in, opportunities that they have or don't have. We don't want to fall prey to this idea that God loves those who are wealthy more, and that's how he's showing his love, because he's showering them with more stuff. This is not a automatic, but if we are in a position where financial success is available in the traditional sense, this idea of building a net worth and, and accumulating for the future and getting to a place where we have wealth, we want to make sure that we still hold it neutral. We still approach all of those decisions as God's decisions to make, not ours. And we stay in this place of deep, intense gratitude. We don't fall prey to entitlement and say, I did it, I deserve it. We stay aware of the fact that we didn't do it. We don't deserve it. And that's what allows us to stay generous and connected to the heart of the owner of the resources. And we do what he asks us to. When people say that they should avoid money, when believers are afraid of having financial resources, I, I do want to acknowledge that there is a really obvious opportunity for the deceitfulness of wealth to choke out our spiritual lives, for us to feel self-sufficient and self-made. We are the owner and we get to keep it and we fall in love with the sense of power and authority and status that that money gives us. And so I understand why people tend to want to avoid it because it is a potential for a, a choking of our spiritual lives. However, if we step into it in a way that honors God, the resources that can be released into kingdom work will change the world. We don't have a resource problem in the kingdom. There's plenty of resources. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There is more than enough. Our problem is not in having enough. Our problem is in what we are choosing to do with those resources if we see them as ours versus his. And so I just want to talk about some of the key components. What do we need to do in order to really establish financial success that honors God? rather than financial success that looks a whole lot like the rest of the world. The most important component that we need to have is boundaries. And we talk a lot about these ideas of boundaries on this podcast, and we'll continue to talk about them because they're so important. Generally speaking, the only boundary that exists when we're accumulating money is just how much money we have. In the world, we say, well, I have it, I'll spend it because I get to. In the kingdom, we want to put very specific limits. We design a spending plan that says, this is what we're going to spend. 
This is what we're choosing ahead of time. These are the things we're going to spend on entertainment, on fun, on restaurants, on enjoyment, the shared experiences, but we are going to draw the line. We're not going to just continually spend just because we have the money. We're going to decide ahead of time where those lines fall so that we free up the additional abundance to make sure that we are not just self-indulgent with it. And so drawing boundaries that are very specific on our spending, even specific boundaries on our earning, how far up that corporate ladder do we actually need to climb? How big does our income actually need to get? And what are we sacrificing to get there? Where do we draw the lines to say this is enough? I think that is one of the most important components to real kingdom financial success is deciding ahead of time where those lines fall. We talk about this idea of a lifestyle cap that says this is enough. This is contentment. This is peace and delight and fullness. And anything above this that comes in, we give away. We stay connected to generosity. We become really aggressive in our giving because we've decided this is plenty. We don't tend to do that in the world. You know, John D. Rockefeller had this famous quote when somebody asked him how much money is enough. He said, just a little bit more. One of the wealthiest humans that has ever lived said he just needed a little bit more. That's the addiction of this money that we can fall into if we're not careful. And boundaries are what protect us from that. Secondly, we need balance. We need to make decisions around our money that put all of these different priorities in balance. And that looks like a reasonable amount of saving for our future. Being intentional about preparing for the future, but not building bigger and bigger barns just to feel more and more and more secure. Deciding what a reasonable, responsible amount of saving looks like and following that path. It looks like balancing enjoyment and delight with generosity and giving to others and lifting the burdens of those who are in pain. Balance is a beautiful thing. It is hard to strike. There's always going to be a lure of more that it says, you know, you could buy more stuff. You have more income. You could spend it on yourself. If you had this new gadget or this new car or that next bigger house, you'll be happier. And so those pulls to just continue to stay out of balance and overextend ourselves are always going to be there. Or the pull to hoard and over save and over protect to put ourselves in a position where we find our security in how much money we have. Those are constantly going to be pulling against us in both directions. And balancing the enjoyment with the preparation is a really important component of kingdom-minded financial success. We want to be in a place where we are doing both. We see these extremes with saving and paying down debt as well. If you get overly focused on eliminating debt to the point where even efficient debt becomes such a priority that you are paying it off so aggressively that you're not saving and preparing for your future in other ways, you can actually put yourself in a bad financial situation. If you're overly focused on accumulating, but you're letting your debt continue to run at an interest rate that's actually stealing all of what you're making on that savings anyway, then you're not balanced. We want to be in position where both of these things are happening simultaneously. And that's part of the challenge with accumulating financial resources is it is a simultaneous uh, saving. You are saving for all of these things at the same time, but it is a sequential need. So you're saving for college and retirement and that vacation that you're going to take and making sure you have 90 days worth of net income to protect yourself and that emergency fund, making sure that you're preparing for that wedding or, you know, all these things that are all swirling at the same time, you're saving for all of them simultaneously, but they're hitting in a sequential order. And so it's really hard to balance in that space because so many things are telling us we need to over-prepare or over-save, or we have all of these things telling us, just spend it now, it's way more fun. And so balance is an incredibly important component to kingdom-minded success when it comes to your finances. And then lastly, accountability. This is not something we were meant to journey in alone. We are always meant to do things like this in community. 
in connection, in relationship. And it takes other people who are in our lives, who know the truth, who know where we're really struggling, who know what we're actually giving, what we're really doing with God's resources. We need to be in connected community that is aware of our reality and can hold us accountable to the commitments that we're making, can call us out when we're going way too far into the spending side of the equation, or if we are way focused on over-preparing and over-securing and over-saving, we need friends and family that can throw the flag and say, hey, I don't know if you're actually in balance here. I don't know if you've set boundaries that are protecting you. It seems like you might be falling prey to some of the worldly thoughts around money. We can't see that on our own. We need people that can see it for us. And we need to be in relationships that are close enough where they have the confidence to call us out, challenge us, and we do the same for them. Money is such a taboo topic and it needs to stop being taboo. We as communities of churches should be the most prepared to hold each other accountable to be in constant conversation about this stuff, to not be walking alone. That's the point. Relational connection and doing life together, including our financial life, is a really important aspect of our journey with Jesus. And so spouses need to be in connection with each other, talking about this stuff, checking in regularly on what are we doing? How are we doing here? Are we honoring God with his resources? Are we spending out of line from the spending plan that we, pl that we put in place? Are we actually paying attention to our non-negotiables and our priorities? Are the boundaries we put in place and the priorities that we've established reflected in the decisions that we're making? And we need family beyond just our spouse. We need kids involved in the conversation so that they understand what it is that we're aiming at and how we're trying to honor God. And they're part of that work. And then we need friends that see us, that know us, that are in similar stages of life or further beyond us that can say, I remember this stage. Here's something to look out for. Here's a potential mistake that I want to protect you from. Those are the layers of relationship we need to be in so that we can remain accountable to honoring God with his resources. And yes, we will achieve financial success, but we will do it from a motivation of recognizing his ownership and making sure that our decisions reflect his heart. Thank you so much for listening to the Faithful Steward podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and other information that we mentioned in today's episode. Also, be sure to check out our website at goodsensemovement.org to get all the resources we offer churches to help equip them in teaching financial stewardship to their community. If you have any questions or any topics you want to make sure we cover on our show, you can email me at jameslenhoff at goodsensemovement.org. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.